Hi, this is Krista Renee from the 90 Day Podcast Show. The month of July concept is extraordinary people doing extraordinary things. This is for both men and women. What extraordinary things you've done that stood out or planning on doing? Please share it with me, Krista Renee, on the 90 Day Podcast. Hi, this is Krista Renee from the 90 Day Podcast Show. And today my guest is Letitia Williams and her son Noah. Letitia, welcome to the 90 Day Podcast. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Okay. And Noah, thank you for joining us as well. You're welcome. Oh my God, listen to you. Noah, I miss seeing you. Mm-hmm. I'm not, I know what, and I'm going to say it, and I said it over and over again. I don't know how many times I've said this, and I mean it. From the bottom of my heart, I have never in so many years of my life have I seen such a higher level of respect at your age, your brilliance, your compassion, filled with high levels of pure love that it's so energetic that it leaves an electric fine fireworks. Let me tell you, you are just amazing, Noah. I want to just say that right up front. You are amazing. Thank you for your kind words. You're quite welcome. Letitia. Yes. Let me tell you, you're dancing. You have, uh, I looked through your Facebook page and you still dance. Yes, I do. <laughs> when, when did you know that dancing is something you felt passionate about? Well, it was at a very young age um, because when I was small, I used to get picked on a lot. And I used to always smoke and I cried a lot. So I started listening to music and dancing, and then my mom was like, oh my God, you dance all the time like your father. But mind you, I didn't, I lost contact with my father when I was very young, and I used to always dance, and that's the only time that I found joy after anything that has happened in life. And then after I realized, okay, I have rhythm, and everyone's like, oh, let the teacher dance. Let Latisse dance, and then I was like, okay, I'm going to go to a performing arts school to, um, you know, make sure my craft is, you know, at its best, and then that's when I started going to dance school, and then I realized that I was a dancer, and that was my passion, and I started from being bullied and picked on, and that was my outlet, and I've been doing it ever since. Now, do you choreograph dancing for classes? Yes, I do. I started choreographing very young once I graduated from New World School of the Arts because that was one of our um, that was one of our criteria that we had to do. Like at the end of the year, we had to choreograph a dance. Sometimes we had to choreograph without song. We had to choreograph without music. So we will stay within the craft. So I started teaching dance. Um, we have a thing in Florida, it's called Children Trust. So it was an after school program. I was um, a dance teacher for um, Booker T. Washington um, High School. And I used to substitute if a teacher was out for dance exchange and they're like, can you teach the class? But then I most likely did majority choreography once I joined the church. And I had like little babies, and they were like my little, my I call it like, my little angels. <laughs> so oh. then I would choreograph, um, dance with babies. I like to deal with the the babies compared right. to teach adults. <laughs> right, but right. Now, ch- now Children Trust is that program still around? Yes, Children Trust program is still around here in Florida. I'm not sure if they have any Connecticut because I haven't seen um, the advertisement. But it is something that is in Florida, and it's a program. If you have a 501c3, um, they will give you money for you to um, 
have your program established and they paid for it. So it was definitely a good program for kids to have an outreach at the, you know, after school. Okay. Now, you vacation in, in Florida, so do you still reach out to them? Do you visit them when you go out to Florida? Um, my babies are on Facebook now. They're so big now. Oh, <laughs> like, okay, okay. Um, they have babies now. I was like, oh my God, <laughs> they have babies. And I'm like, they have grown so big. Um, but yes, when I'm in Florida, I reach out to my students and I do get to see them or they'll come visit me. And my dance, my um, my classmates that I went to school with, the ones that are still in Florida, will meet before I fly back to Connecticut. And we'll play around and dance and see if we still have it in our in our 40s. <laughs> <laughs> we probably won't do as many as we used right. to <laughs> Cracking and everything else, but for the most part, we still got it. We just not trying to go as hard because we're in our 40s now. <laughs> oh, wow. Who inspired you to dance? My grandmother. Um, my grandmother was a dancer. Mm. And she actually inspired me when it came to point shoes because it was like ballerinas and you, there was very little of black ballerinas. Um, back in my day, um, so my grandmother, we used to call, they used to call her, well, my cousins would call her Auntie Lean, because she was lean back in the day, mm -hmm. she danced later, but she used to always, like, dance, and she would move the tables in the living room, and just inspired me to dance, and, like, point her feet, so she was my first dance teacher before I, um, started at Nolan Magnet, and, okay. yeah, yeah, um, he inspired me to dance because she was a dancer, and then that's when I knew, I uh, heard more about, you always dance like your dad, you always dance like your dad. I was like, well, I haven't seen my dad in so many years until I, you know, came to Connecticut and found him. Um, in 2016 is when I reunited with my dad after 38 years, and ever since we hear music and we both look with chocolate on the <laughs> smiling and we're both happy when we hear music we'll be like ah I see you and I'm like yes puppy <laughs> I was like yeah it brings us joy yeah. so my grandma um, she was definitely my inspiration she always made sure if I had an audition if I had to go all the way to Orlando they drove me all the way to Orlando for auditions any dance um, uniforms I needed she made sure I had it so my grandmother Whatever I needed for dance, she made sure that I had everything I needed. Oh, wow. Right now, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to hear more from Leticia and Noah. This is Krista Renee from the 90 Day Podcast. If you are looking to buy a car in good condition with a 30-day warranty, then you have to check out... My name is Salvatore Visicale. My address is 631 Wittesville Avenue, Hartford. My phone number is 6007138348. I got best of car I can sell. Just to come down, I'll help you out, find a good car, reliable car. He has the best cars from Ford, Dodge, Honda, Subaru, Toyota, and Saab. They are all in good condition. He offers a 30-day warranty on engines and transmissions. His cards are reasonable. And check this out. He will negotiate prices. There is no financing. So have your money ready. Check it out today. Eastern Auto Sales. This commercial has been sponsored by... Salvatore Visicale.
podcast and welcome back and we are here with Letitia and Noah. Now who is your favorite dancer alive or dead? Oh let's see my favorite dancer I would say my favorite dancer is Panika Jones which is a classmate of mine. She's actually a principal ballerina. So she actually made it to what we used to think was impossible. Um, and she is amazing. They used, to, they used to call us twins. Sometimes I'll get her pictures and post it. And I'm like, oh my God, the teacher, yeah, that's me. But it's not. <laughs> so you start seeing the legs all the way up like my legs don't go there. Or I'm still not on point shoes. But Panika Jones is an amazing dancer. She danced with Dan, Dan Steeler of Harlem. She's a principal dancer at the Nutcracker. And she's just so graceful. And we used to be in class together. And she is, like, my favorite dancer because she still does it. She didn't give up, even with um, struggles that she had in school. And she just kept going. And, like, her admiration for dance was like I see her dance and I was like well try to dance like you think it was a thing where we had to dance like we couldn't dance mm-hmm. and it was our senior cases and she couldn't do it it was like no you can't punch your feet you're supposed to flex it and she couldn't do it <laughs> and we used to look at it like dance like we don't know how to dance and she's like I'm trying but I can't <laughs> so I was like she can't do it it's like don't punch your feet no like half extensions and she would just she couldn't do it. It was just built in her. So she's like my favorite, my favorite dancer. She's still alive and we talk all the time. Oh, wow. Now, what kind of dancing do you perform? Um, lately, because I'm into the church, so I dance liturgical. Um, so um, before I moved to Connecticut in 2016, I was part of a liturgical dance company. Um, I also was teaching dance at Logos Baptist Church. So for the most part, I like liturgical because it's personal. And I like to dance personally for God because then that allows the spirit to come in. Yeah, huh? And compared to choreographing, just to choreograph, because I to dance for a rap artist. Um, and I did do the subtler music. I did that for like two years, but I I just didn't quite like it. It was just a job. Mm -hmm. But once I went into liturgical, it was just, it was so much more. Like, this is what life is about. Like, to sit there and pray before you dance, and then it's just like, the spirit comes in, and I'm like, I don't even know what I did. Because sometimes I don't even choreograph when I dance liturgical. If I'm dancing by myself solo, Mm -hmm. I don't choreograph to liturgical. I just listen to music. I pray before I dance. And the spirit moves me. Wow. That is awesome. And you move so gracefully. I heard that a lot. <laughs> and I look at myself and I'm like, oh, okay. Because I think I did something just recently. It was for a repass. Um, for someone, their father passed. And I was like, what song would you like me to use? And he was like, we trust you. So I used it. And I prayed because I'm like, I, it was last minute. And I was like, okay, I got two days. I can't choreograph, and I don't want to choreograph to um, a repass. And when I look at it, I looked at it like over 20 times. And I was just like, as soon as the song says, Oh my God. And I was just like, whoa. And it was just like, boom. And it, I could just feel the spirit. And I was just like, ah, like this is what people see. And I got to see it. And. My body, the spirit used me, and at that point, everyone was walking out because they were crying, and I just finished, and I, it took a minute for me to catch my breath, of course, because I just said the spirit used me, and, but. Well, you didn't yeah. tell me you could sing, too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I come from a family of, um. A vocalist, and my son also know I can sing because his father is um he writes music, and his family his side his dad's side of family they all um, write music and sing inside the church and play instruments. So yeah, Noah has it all the way around dancing, singing, mm-hmm. playing music. He's in the band, so yeah. Well, do you like singing other than church songs? Um. I do, but I 
I most likely will sing church songs, but I do. Um, most likely to myself, I never wanted to be in a front where people like, oh, come on to, um, I'm sorry, my daughter just came into the room. <laughs> so, <laughs> I like to um, just sing to myself and not really make, be like, hey, be part of what they call it, the church, um, the worship team, and okay. so forth. Okay. No. In the front, uh huh. I just like to be in the far back. Yeah. Of yeah. singing. Yeah. Wow! Impressive. What a <laughs> great resume. <laughs> what yeah, a great resume. Uh, that resume gonna be long. And 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 when I look at your 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 photos, I am loving the gray and black hair. I love the way you rock that. <laughs> Thank you. I have no choice because I get my gray from my grandmother. Um, because I'm Dominican, so my grandma's hair is all white. So I honestly have my. I'm the first child, so I get those jeans. So yeah. <laughs> I and you rock it very well. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I mean, you look absolutely beautiful. And the way you style it, I'm like, okay. <laughs> okay, Tisha, all right. <laughs> because, you yeah, know, so because not like, everybody could rock a, a gray and black hairstyle. Yes, that's probably also because their hair is not great. <laughs> it makes it hard when they're trying to dye it. Um, it's kind of complicated because my hair is naturally um, white and salt and pepper, so it's eventually going to be all white. Oh. So sometimes when I want to rock the style, it's hard to find hair to rock the style. Okay. But when I find it, everyone's like, I saw you here, I saw you there. And I'm like, how did you see me? And it's like, you're the only person that connect and is <laughs> rocking my great hair. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, that might be true. That, that might be true. <laughs> but yeah, you probably did see me. So now I have like the great mohawk, so I was like, yeah, that might be true. Well, I'm loving it. I'm loving it, and I'm I, and I am so happy that you are not afraid to even rock it. You know, I'm, yeah, I'm, 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 you're, you're like profiling it and, sty and styling it at the same time. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> I try to be different. I like to be different. I I mean, that's just something that that's just who I am. I like to be different. That's why sometimes I have many talents. Um, I was told, so I, uh, I dance, I sing, I paint abstract art, um, and I also have like, the gift of helps, and and I am a gardener, so I have like, a green thumb, and it's just crazy on the things. I was like, is there anything you can't do? Really? <laughs> Maybe. I just got to figure it out. <laughs> So what made you get into the abstract painting? Um, okay, so the story starts off sad, but it ends up very well. Um, I lost my child at six months, so I was dealing with a lot of anger, and so I grabbed some paint, I grabbed a canvas, and I painted. And then when I painted, I realized that I paint what I feel. So my first painting is called My Joy, and it ended up being like a woman, and it was like a number seven, which was completion, and it was like, oh, it looks like a belly, and it looks like a little fetus, and apparently that's what I was going through. It was like, you know, dealing with completion of my life, and and I painted it, and then I went through something else, and then it turned into Mr. Blue, and the blues, and then I painted something else, and it turned like incomplete, perfect start, and then it, it just, everything... And I, once I came to Connecticut, I didn't paint because I was like, I'm afraid, like, what am I going to paint now? Because <laughs> I was so gay right. when I like, in, like, a down sparrow of life. But then everyone was like, are you going to sell them? And I'm like, no. So what, <laughs> no, do you I mean, have them hanging yeah, up? Huh? Do you have them hanging up? I have them in my house on the third floor in my loft, not hanging up. <laughs> Okay. Oh, why not? I, I, if they I, I, if they mean so much, because they represent something personal. 
I don't know. I guess I don't want people to see it. I did post it on my Facebook, but I didn't want anybody to, like, see it and have to, like, go over the stories. Okay. So I just keep them very private. Right. And my mom, they, you can definitely make money. I say, well, when it gets to that point, maybe. But at this point, it doesn't look like that's what God wants me to use it for. So I need it. Okay, so I'm not selling my paintings. Right. Now, you mentioned gardener, meaning planting, gardening. Yeah, so right now, my garden, I have, I garden, I have, like, five different lettuce. I have um, celery, I have bell pepper, I have jalapenos, I have two different eggplants, I have squash, zucchini, strawberry, mm. and six different tomatoes, and lavender. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So... Lavender, what would you use with lavender? How would you use lavender? I will dry it um, and make lavender oil. Okay. Um, that's what I would use. And I love purple. It's my favorite color. So I was, everything purple, I'm growing it. As far as that eggplant, like, it's purple, I'm growing it. But lavender is something you can smell when it's dry. And then you can crush it and put it in oil and it just it's like really good and soothing to smell, especially because mm. I'm, you know, just a just to have it and just to sniff it. Yeah, it's soothing, like relaxing. Because working yeah. at school, mm -hmm. I'd be like, "Ooh, it can get a little stressful." And I'm like, "Lord, <laughs> where's my oil? <laughs> I need something to bring me back." No, you but, mentioned two kinds of eggplant. I only see one colored eggplant in my life. What? Know, it is one. They are one color, but you have one that grows bigger than the other one. Oh, okay. And I have seen smaller eggplants and then a larger eggplants. Yeah. Yeah. It's just different. Um, just the just, just, just different ones. It's just one is like really big and one is just really small. Okay. And you mentioned how many different kinds of tomatoes? I have. I have six, if I'm not mistaken, because I, I know last year I grew a lot. I have six different tomatoes. So I have like the big boys, I have the green tomatoes, I have the, they're like those, oh, what are they called? They're like really, they're orange. They're like the sunburst tomatoes. And it's just like different ones. Uh -huh. and, but I have the, the labels on it because sometimes I'll forget right. but I do know that's one of the ones I love the most is the sunburst because then I just get them and you can eat them like like fruits right. and like my team and my job is like is your tomatoes up yet because I want to get some tomatoes <laughs> I'll bring you guys some tomatoes now with the green tomatoes do you fry them absolutely really so what do you flour them and just fry I them? flour them uh huh mm -hmm. My guests love the green tomatoes. And just a, what, a little bit of olive oil? A little bit of olive oil, um, salt and pepper, and yeah, and fry them and they're like delicious, they love it. Wow, that sounds good. You no, go, girl, you are a jack of all <laughs> trades. I have to bring it to the house and I will definitely, because I normally cook dinner on Fridays for my guests, mm -hmm. so. I would definitely have to invite you to come over and you can actually have some fried green tomatoes. Oh, all right. I look forward to that. <laughs> I look okay, forward to that. thank you. Right now, we are going to take a break, but when we come back, we are going to hear more from Noah. This is Krista Renee from the 90 Day Podcast. If you are looking to buy a car in good condition, with a 30-day warranty, then you have to check out... My name is Salvatore Visicale. My address is 631 Wittesfield Avenue, Hartford. My phone number is 60-713-8348. I got best of car I can sell. Just to come down, I'll help you out, find a good car, reliable car. He has the best cars from Ford, Dodge, Honda, Subaru, Toyota, and Saab. They are all in good condition. He offers a 30-day warranty on engines and transmissions. His cards are reasonable. And check this out. 
He will negotiate prices. There is no financing. So have your money ready. Check it out today. Eastern Auto Sales. This commercial has been sponsored by Salvatore Visicale. Welcome back to the 90 Day Podcast Show. This is Crystal Renee, and we are here now talking with Noah. 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 <laughs> Noah, are you still there? <laughs> mm-hmm. Tell me, what have you been up to? What I've been up to, well, it's kind of a lot. So I've been drumming, acting, poetry. I've even been rapping and singing, and all of those connect to TGO, the gifted ones. Have you heard of them before? No. Can you tell me a little bit about it? So, TGO is is a group of uh, like people who think they can't do stuff, but they join the um this group, and the group's creator is called. Um, she's called, um, she's Kimberly Bridges, um, who perform, who perform for, um, TGO's a performing arts, a performing mm-hmm. arts program, mm-hmm. that teaches you to never give up, even if you're in the strongest predicaments. All right. What a positive attitude. I like yeah. her already. Kimberly Bridges, what a positive attitude to have. So when you when you're in that program, that's when you do the the drumming, the singing, the no. rap. No, that's not the drum. No, that's a drumming team. That's um a performing arts program. It's not drumming. Drumming is is Harvard Proud that I um yeah Harvard Proud is presented by Miss Starks or who you call Terry Starks. Okay. Oh. And that's when you do the drumming and then the rapping and yeah. the singing. Okay. And what else did you do? Um, like I said, I do rapping, singing, poetry, acting, dancing, and all that other stuff. And it's oh, it's, yo, but drumming is like, but it, drumming is. Part of my life, I have to drum to perform for like shows and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But you know, like influencing of like who I am because every time I like dance or act or all that stuff that I just said, mm-hmm. it puts me with confidence that I can do it. Oh even wow! If, yeah. Even if I sometimes nervous, mm-hmm. I will do it. Yeah. Now, would you would you combine your poetry and your drumming together? Would you ever combine your poetry and your drumming together? Not quite. Because um, Harvest Crowd and TGO, the gifted ones, is like two different teams. Okay. Okay. I'm on t- different teams, but it's two different, I mean, two different programs. Okay, well, and tell me a little bit about your, your poetry. Huh? Tell me about your poetry. It's not about poetry. Um, TGO is a art, uh, art, no, poetry. She was talking about poetry, talking about your poetry. Um, poetry, um, it's not that good, but I'm still getting the hang of it. Okay. And how about your acting? My acting is very well. Very well. I've been acting very well. Have you, what plays have you been in? Have you, are you, um, have you been in plays in school or have you been in plays outside of school or with the Harford Proud? I've 
been up. Uh, no, it's not plays for Harvard's crowd. It's CGO is a. It's CGO that has like acting, rapping, singing, dancing, poetry, all that stuff. Oh, okay. But for but for acting in CGO, that means outside the school. Mhm. Mm I'm good at acting. I can cry. I I can be mad. I can be mad. I can be mad at acting. I can do a lot of stuff with acting. I bet you can. Can you can, can, can you can you say a line from a from a script that you perform? I know I'm putting you. I I know I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> Well, your favorite one? Did you just have one with TGO? Let me just just did a performance. No, I really did not have it. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Virtual learning due to the pandemic? Yes, we had to do virtual learning due to, due to the pandemic. But that doesn't mean that some scholars can have a person inside the school. Like, we gave them the opportunity to, we gave them the opportunity to put them in person for Mondays and Tuesdays. Or they can be in person for Wednesdays and Thursdays. But that's not all. They can be in person for all four days. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. But Friday, um, all the scholars and everybody is virtual learning on Fridays. Did you like that? Yes. It was very fun and it was a twist. Yeah. It was very unexpected, too. It was. What things do you want to achieve personally and academically before you start school again? Hmm. That's a tough decision. I have a lot of stuff. I have a lot of stuff like, like, like I want to become. There's like a lot of stuff I've been wanting to do as a kid, like be a fire, fire, be a firefighter, at least, <laughs> and a doctor. <laughs> I don't know what to choose, but if there's, but if there's one thing that I want to choose, go back to school before I go back to school, is how to like make people think that how to like be a good person and not and not say the bad things that might hurt someone's feelings and I've been and I've been thinking about that for like days and days and I couldn't just get it get it out of my head and that's the only thing that's been stuck in my head well how long long go ahead go ahead Go ahead. And yeah, the only thing that I want to achieve that's academically or personally for other people is how to make people say good things so they can achieve something that's better for them in life. Oh, that is awesome. So how, how, would, you go, how would you go about doing that? How would you make people be good? That's a big task. That is a huge task. 
Where where would you begin? Um, <laughs> I really have no idea. I'm just gonna do it anyway. I really have no idea. But um, I you know I believe kids say. I mean. Kids say some of the most incredible things, but Noah, you are so intelligent and so smart. And I believe one day you will come up with a plan because you are so incredibly intelligent that I strongly believe that one day you will have a plan. You will come up with something because you have a purpose. I, I strongly believe that you strongly have a purpose here. Mm -hmm. We all have a purpose in life. Yes. And we can it out. Yes. Even <laughs> Go ahead. Even who? Um, I said, um, I said, in life, we all have a purpose. Mm-hmm. Even if life sucks, we all have a purpose. Yeah. It really does. Yeah. But we just count and just keep going. Mm-hmm. Keep, go keep going down the right path. Mm-hmm. I agree. I, I totally agree. I totally agree with you. We have to continue on going down the right path no matter what. No matter <clears throat> what. No matter how hard life gets, we still have to look at things optimistically and we still have to follow God's word, and we still have to do the right thing, and we still have to keep um, love and respect um, first, and and love one another and respect one another. Mm hmm. So, what grade would you be? What grade would you attend this fall? So, I will be attending sixth grade this fall. At Achievement First Summit Middle School. Oh, wow. Wow. So that is, a, what, that's not June, that's, that's middle, that's still middle, middle school, correct? That's not middle high school. Middle. High school is 9, 10, 11, and 12th grade. Right. But it was 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. Okay, so that's still the elementary school, and junior high is... Seven and eight. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. I'm not. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did you just say junior? No, junior high school is seventh and eighth grade, right, Letitia? Back in our days, yes, but here it is not. It is elementary. Is kindergarten, first, second, third, and fourth. And then he, because he started in second grade at Achievement First Elementary, then it's still part of the network. So then he goes fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and summit. And then he goes to Achievement First High School, which would be ninth, tenth, eleven, and twelve. Oh, okay. And then I have to, and then after twelfth grade, I'm going to have to say goodbye to that beloved building that I love very much. Wow. So and I'll still. Say, and you and you and you and you love that build, the building very much, huh? I love it like it's my wife. Please stop. 
silence. Get together as one unity. I'm talking to you, him. I'm talking to me. I'm talking to the politicians, electricians, moms and dads. I'm talking to the people over in Baghdad. Every time I turn on the news, the same thing. Another story. Bang, bang, bang. Another life that's written in peace. Why can't we just stand in peace? I'm a boy now, but I want to be a man. Take me by the hand. Show me that I can. I'm looking up to you to so put the guns down. All I want to do is just be around. All I want to do is just be around. All I want to do is just be around. That was incredible. Give it up for my guest. It's extraordinary, extraordinary. Let me tell you, this month of July, it is about extraordinary people. And let me tell you, Letitia Williams and her son, Noah, let me tell you, they are both extraordinary people doing extraordinary things on the 90 Day Podcast Show. Listen, I want to thank you both. I want to thank you both for your time. I want to thank you both for your support and supporting the 90 Day Podcast Show, okay? Oh, thank you for having us. Oh, you're, you're so quite welcome. And continue on enjoying your vacation. Oh, we will. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will talk to you both soon. Goodbye, you guys. Just the two of us. That's right. Just the two of you. We can make it. Yes, we try. try. Just the two of us. us. <laughs> you and I. <laughs> Bye, you guys. <laughs>